Well, good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, I just thought I'd make this uh, this morning because uh, I've had a little bit of to and fro, let's say, and you know, discussions on my uh, Facebook main page, and I guess therefore you might say on this the uh, um, groups that I that I have there at Facebook. Um, and it's about um, uh, light rail, um, articulated buses, uh, guided buses, uh, and what they call trackless trams, and, and the uh, number of people who uh, uh, are, criti are critical of my comments uh, on the subject uh, need to bear a few things in mind. One of those things is, oh, by the way, um, and some of my friends on Facebook don't know this, uh, but uh, my my wife and I went over to uh, Wellington in New Zealand in January of 2017, and um, three years plus ago, and we met uh, friends from uh, um, Canada and from England. And we spent five days running around on the uh, trolley bus network in Wellington. A wonderful time. Everyone enjoyed themselves. And uh, it was a farewell tour of the trolley bus network. But um, and I suppose you could say some people would be cynical about, oh, battery buses. You know, when you, you look at the more recent history of battery buses, or even older history of, of them, and trams and things. By the way, they've even had battery trams uh, in the past. Uh, they don't last very long, and, you know, you have to keep changing them over, and you know, charging them up and uh, putting a new vehicle in, in service and so forth. But uh, I've got to say a couple of things here. Number one, batteries and their reliability have in, uh, has greatly improved and uh, Wellington has double deck buses that are battery powered now I don't intend going there actually till about January of 2022 that's all being well God you know God willing all the rest of it for a few days and I'll have a look at uh, while well, I'll be riding um, some of the trains and and uh, and rewrite one or two bus services, uh, perhaps uh, that uh, replace the trolley bus uh, network, of course, with the battery double deckers. So that should be interesting. The point, though, also is with the ground pickup. Uh, now, those who are familiar with the Sydney uh, light rail, which everyone calls correctly trams, uh, circular key to Randwick and. and um, Kings, uh, Kingsford uh, from Circular Quay to Town Hall there is a ground pickup system uh, it's a French invention and they use it somewhere and I think in any way it's in other countries one or two other systems exist and I must admit a lot of people were cynical about that no what about if it gets wet what about the leaves and the mud and everything else well I reckon it's basically ran quite well and so what can happen if you visualize when you're talking about these trackless trams and anyone can see these uh, on um, YouTube some interesting systems you could have a ground pickup system in the middle of town if you didn't want to have wires running past all the historic old buildings like you got Clover Moore, the mayor of Sydney, saying, oh, I don't want overhead wires running past the Queen Victoria building, but it did. They did for a hundred years, let's say. Um, so, you know, that's laughable in a sense. But anyway, they accepted that and they paid out extra for the ground um, um, pick pickup. Now, what they should have done in Newcastle, incidentally, was have ground pickup on the trams and they wouldn't have to worry about stopping every stop they they, they recharge for 40 seconds it's uh, uh, the slowest trams in the whole of australia it could have been a modern and, and and efficient system if it had ground pickup and then of course when it's going to go out into the suburbs it's going to go to the john hunter hospital eventually 
uh, I reckon be under construction quite soon. That'll be 750 volt overhead. But getting back to this uh, uh, trackless trams, which I'm throwing a bit of support behind, you might say, having seen them on the YouTube uh, channel, uh, I'd say that there'll be cities in Australia somewhere, I don't know which one, I'm, I'm saying could be any of the Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, could be Adelaide, could be anywhere, that these systems are vastly different and better, shall we say, uh, than even the O-Bone, which is an interesting system in Adelaide, and it, it exists in a couple of other places, these O-Bone, the guided busways, uh, well, huge concrete tracks, let's say. Now, a lot of people might even, even object to that. I don't want these great big concrete tracks running for the place. But if you had the ground pick up an overhead wire for electricity, obviously, for the vehicle, and then one single rail, like in, in France, guiding up a five-car trackless tram in the streets, as well as, I assume, I, I, on some uh, reserve right away, but I'm not sure of that, I haven't seen that over there, but you could do it in Australia. And you could, for example, go along the Brisbane busway and come off and go to go go to the, um, uh, the shopping centre there um, um, and you could do a loop and come back out and so forth. I mean, you could go to, for example, on the busway uh, um, in Brisbane and then go across to uh, Brown's Plains with this type of system. It'd still be on the highway, but it'd be a bus lane not a complete bus way separate from the highway. But it would still work. So you could segregate it in that sense. You, you, you could uh, paint it and make it, and make, you know, it, cars do not enter that, that bus way, except at cross streets where obviously people could turn in and out of cross streets. Uh, but this type of thing could be done. Now, uh, a standard busway, by the way, is being extended from eight, eight mile planes. It's going to go down to Springwood. Uh, that's good, good for your kilometres extra. But we're sort of wandering around on the subject here, but we, I think you can see what I'm getting at. Uh, just as a huge fuss was made many, many years ago, well over 100, let's say 100 years ago, uh, when gas lights were being replaced by electricity. Oh my goodness. Gas lighter. The guys going out and lighting the gas, they lose their jobs. That's the way it goes, you know. Uh, trolley buses. Oh, pulling the trolley bus wires down. Oh dear. It, it, it was, as I said, we went to the trouble of going to Wellington to ride those. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite a change. And a trackless tram. Let's put that in this perspective in Australia, if if and when that is built, it'd be stunning. People, as I say, who are critical today, uh, and even dismissive, and, oh, that's nothing, it's a bus, oh, no, no. If they see the system running, as I said, five-car vehicles, and by the way, they'd be double-ended, they just go back the same way as a, it's a, it's a light rail without the tracks, if you want to put it that way. Now in Brisbane, just to conclude some of this, you might say, they're building what they call the metro, which I guess is one of the most overused words in, in the language. But still, they were criticised as, oh, they're nothing but double articulated buses, aren't they, to the Lord Mayor? Really? Well, no. They're double articulated but double ended, and they're transit vehicles. They're not really buses, but they are guided and they are electric. Uh, so we'll see how that develops, and that's supposed to open in 2023, so it's not that long. But it, I hasten to add that the system is designed to have five-car vehicles. Now, that's pretty good. If you're running a five-car vehicle every, every two minutes, you'll handle the crowds. There's no problem about handling crowds. So uh, I just see this as a natural progression something that's going to happen and I just dismiss all the critical comments about the system and the ideas and everything else from people and I say 
I'm fascinated by them. I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to seeing that kind of thing built. And um, some of my uh, overseas friends, uh, um, uh, Nick Kelly would be one in particular, and uh, I send my greetings. Uh, I'm sure he's travelled on that uh, uh, Paris uh, guided bus uh, light, well, what would you describe, trackless tram. Five car vehicles, as I said, I've got to repeat that. One rail at street level guiding this uh, system and an overhead wire with a pantograph like a tram or train, should I say. Quite long system, quite long lines. Um, must work very, very well, I'm sure. So I just thought I'd put those opinions out there and see. Uh, I'd welcome uh, uh, civil and polite comments, uh, of course, and uh, any interest in the subject and any discussion is very, very welcome. So thanks for viewing.